This is Doris of the Future coming to you live from the copy room here to report that I'm almost 100% ready for this day and excited about it. Now I'm in the elevator because I got caught talking to my phone at the copy machine. So embarrassing. Anyway, this is Doris of the Future coming to you live from the veranda. I just wanted to tell you that this vlog I, I've rambled for like 15 minutes this morning, so I'm just gonna start this and call it an introduction to Mid-Month Book Bash 2.0 because if you saw the vlog I just uploaded from Vietnam, last weekend was supposed to be Mid-Month Book Bash and it was an epic failure. Um, so, quickly, Mid-Month Book Bash is a weekend in which we all who want to participate, <laughs> try to read a little extra on a four day weekend. It's based on those old 24 and 48 readathons. Like why don't people do those anymore? Anyway, it's based on that, but um, you know, if you're in the workforce, you kind of need more than just the weekend. So we, we cheat a little and start on Friday and give ourselves Monday to finish up. So it runs every month. Um, Friday through Monday, the weekend of, or immediately after, the 10th of the month. So join us. And if, if, if like me, you failed last, last weekend, let's try again. Um, I'm going to show you the mountain that I climbed looking for the caterpillar now, and then we'll get into um, the footage. And, and I'm going to be back tomorrow because I'm feeling it. I'm, I'm back in the groove. I'm here. I'm here for it. So that's the mountain I climbed looking for the caterpillar. The dude's up there watering the bougainvillea. It's a good life here, people. It's a good life. Don't you just want to sit there and read a book? over there. Hey ho, it's almost the weekend. <coughs> Hello world. Hello, it's Doris with Aldi Books and I have a worm on my desk. Of course I do. I need to go return Wormy to the wild because I no longer need his services. Um, so here's what happened. <laughs> Yesterday was just the absolute culmination of a couple of very chaotic weeks. Oh my goodness. So I think I've already told you it's been crazy since I was sick and went on vacation and quarterly testing here at school. I just can't catch a break. I cannot. Um, so, <laughs> yesterday, I got to school, and I was going to do show and tell in kindergarten. So, I had a caterpillar um, that the kindergartners had found on their own. <laughs> Yay! And I had been keeping him in a coffee cup in my other office, um, the ELL office, which I'm no longer doing ELL because they're making me do chemistry this year. But um, yeah, so I needed a worm. And so I went and I raided the little um, garden shed and found a trowel. Um, you, you, you probably saw our little garden when I showed you the view from my window. I mean, what a view, right? <laughs> and so I went, I went on a quest for a worm. Um, there were none in the little gardening boxes, ironically. I think because the cement walls go down too deep. And um, anyway, so I went and looked under a tree and I found a worm because, you know, I am a biology teacher. I mean, I'm rusty, but... You know, I found my worm. I found my worm. I was, I was proud. I was ready 
So I went to the ELL room and um, I needed to clean up the caterpillar because, you know, I don't know if you all know this, but caterpillars are poop machines. Dude was nasty. So I went down to clean him up, like his little environment so that I could, you know, I have a nicer show and tell session and Cater Caterpillar had escaped. It was like Shawshank Redemption up in that place. I mean to tell you. I went down to the garden looking at all the plants, hoping to find a caterpillar. And I went all the way up the mountain looking for a caterpillar. And there was no caterpillar to be found. Like, it's just at the beginning of caterpillar season here. Oh, God. Probably half of you do not care about this caterpillar, but... I had to race to my desk and like come up with plan B for care garden, which was finishing their life cycle posters. So we had to do the chrysalis and the, the, the butterfly. And, and so I had to like find these images and make pockets for the chrysalis and blah, 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 blah. My copy paste function wasn't working on my laptop. I had no time to go find technology to get it fixed. So I had to like do it old school, like back in the 80s style, um, like printing multiple images and cutting them out and pasting them to make copies. I don't know, it was just, cray cray up in here just and that's the way it's been for two weeks that's the way it's been um i don't even remember like one of my principals came in wanting uh one of my tests to test a student individually and i couldn't even find my tests i had to tell him like can you can i bring it to you in a couple minutes because i'm just like I don't know what's going on in my world. <laughs> and as soon as he walked out the door, I'm like, no, wait, wait, I know where they are now. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so I heard, like, I heard that we're going to do mid, mid month book bash again this weekend because last weekend was a flop for me at least. But Carla King, hello, Carla. She posted on, on my video that she's gonna do it again and she's heard several others are, so yay. I know Heidi might, Heidi might, hello Heidi. So, last night, here's the book update. <laughs> last night, I finally got to page 200 in The Sparrow by Mary Doria Russell. Uh, this is a science fiction and I couldn't even think of the book I wanted to compare this to, which is um, not The Martian. <laughs> Hail Mary, Project Hail Mary um, by Andy Weir, also of The Martian fame. So science fiction based on um, finding uh, other life out in the universe. <coughs> Pardon me, the, the swine flu lingers. So, um, and that's kind of like, it, it is setting out on this quest to find life, but the two books are quite different. I wish I had the other one to show you, but I donated it to someone. I don't know who. Maybe another ELO. There are birds. I should show you the birds. I don't know if we can see one. It was up in the tippy tops of those trees. No. There's one. Whoa. Whoa, that was so red. Oh my God, those are so red. I know you can't see them, but. Oh, those are so cool. Ooh. Do you see it? Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Anyway, that's the garden I was referring to. Sorry. Oops. Double sorry. <laughs> I mean, 
What would a Doris video be without a squirrel episode? <laughs> you know I get distracted if I can, you know, see something cool going on outside. Anyway, what was I even talking about? Um, science fiction. So they're both, you know, alien life forms central to the story. But um, Project Hail Mary is a lot more hardcore science. Like it was excellent, excellent for the classroom. It has biology, physics, chemistry, really cool stuff. And this has some interesting science ideas in it too, but they're more like fictional. Um, for example, um, their spacecraft is inside an asteroid they've like reclaimed like apparently asteroids are a commercial industry in in the year 2016 which is in 2060 sorry um which is interesting that this is not so far into the future uh, actually some of it said in 2019 20, 20 2021 um so really cool uh you get the the first contact and its song is the first contact I think which is super lovely and um, so there's some some science but it's more about the um, uh, I don't know if ethics morals um, that's not religious discussion I keep, the word is not coming that I want to say um, theology no maybe it's on the back <laughs> like the people that go on this venture are actually not any any nation or group of nations as in um project hail mary which i found more realistic this is just the jesuit um ministry the jesuit priests get together to do it Anyway, so there's a lot of philosophical, God, maybe that's what I want to say. There's a lot of, of, of searching your soul and searching your heart and searching your beliefs and philosophical discussions in here, which is um, indeed interesting. Now, I think perhaps, like, I am truly enjoying this. It's really good. It's really good. Um... And I'm only at the 200 page mark. So books that have a very impactful ending are work for me, totally work for me. Uh, and I think that this one is set up to do that. It's set up very well because uh, it's consistently good. I think that it might be suffering a little bit from hype um, because several people I know have read it and loved it. Like I looked on Goodreads and um, out of maybe 15 people that I follow, like eight or 10 gave it five stars and the rest four stars. There's only one three star out of the people I follow, you know? So, I think this there's a little bit of hype going on here because I am not it's not a compulsive read yet at the 200 page mark it's good I enjoy it um, and I think there's gonna be some deep thinking which I love but it's not a compulsive read for me yet the characters are fabulous so the, the characters I just he's He's testing next door. We, we have to separate our desks for testing because um, cheating is an art form in college prep school. Let me just tell you. <laughs> it's burning a hole in my soul, this concept. Oh, it makes me angry. Anyway, um, God, what was I saying? <laughs> the characters. I'm back. I'm back. I, like, my mind is chaotic, but... You know, I'm, I'm back to the chaotic you're used to, not the stressed out version. Anyway, the characters are so realistic and, and people you genuinely care about. So, like, I'm probably going to miss some of them when I'm done reading this. The thing that I think is 
I'm going to go ahead and say it slightly, slightly irritating me is the way this book is set up. It's, um, it's told through like the current storyline is 2060 and the, it, it's told through flashbacks back to like 2013, 2019, 2021, um, as you're preparing to go. So it, it, the current timeline is when they're in the asteroid heading to this planet and discovering it, the modern timeline. Um, you have some, some flashbacks to when they're discovering it and setting it up and even before a little before that like establishing who the characters are in life and how they know each other and um it, it, the thing that's pulling you through the book is this uh, breadcrumbs these little a carrot it's a carrot of what happened? He, she keeps teasing you about what happened on this planet. And through these flashbacks and, and changes in <clears throat> time. And I appreciate that. Like, that is a device that typically works for me. I think, though, she did it too much for me. Like, it, it just felt like half the book was or not half the book, a good third was this carrot about what happened. And like, actually still like half the book because we still don't know what happened. And I realized that that's a, a device, but I don't know, it made it drag a bit. It made it drag a bit. So, but like I said, um, it's really good and there's still room for an impactful ending. So stay tuned. I mean, I gotta work, man. It's okay. It's only 740. I have over an hour still. And, you know, we're doing Gim Kit in first block, and that's gonna be a win for everybody involved. That's an online game, learning game. I'm all over the place this morning. Like, I just haven't recovered. Like, you don't even know how crazy my life has been for the last, I don't know how long. Anyway, anyway, so there's that. My plan is to finish this, is to finish this. At least, at least over the course of this weekend. Okay. The good news is I don't have to work this week. Um, also, I want to start these. So we have... The Secrets of Heartwood Hall by Booktube's own Katie Lumsden. I wanted to read this for March Mystery Madness, but didn't get to it. Uh, and I don't read a lot of mysteries, but I, f I think this one is Victorian, and I'm kind of, I think I'm in the mood for Victorian. I uh, haven't done that in quite some time, and I do read mysteries a couple times a year, so usually for March Mystery Madness and Cloak and Dagger Christmas. <laughs> and then the other one I have that I've been waiting to get from my library is The Adventures of Amina Al-Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty. I love me some Chakraborty. The Davaba trilogy really worked for me. So I'm excited to dive into these. Um, Somewhat problematic is the fact that I only have three days left and the holds take forever on these two books. They're highly popular at the time, which I'm excited for both of these authors. They are very deserving. So only three days left with the um, physical version. However, I do have them both have come in in the audiobook. So that, um, there's another bird. I'm so sorry. Can I show it to you? Did you see it? There it is. I didn't even have, oh my gosh, that's as close as I can get. Fly bird, fly. 
I know y'all are like, oh, Doris, there it went. So cool. Doris, that's not as cool as you think it is. But it is, friends. It is. Okay, okay. <gasps> so cool. I wish I had a better camera. It's a big one, right? Huh. Okay, back to it. Back to it. Oh, it's so cool. <sighs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> um, I do have both of these on audiobook. And... So, and, and that came in a few days ago. So I have like more like 10 to 12 days left in the audiobooks. So I think that I am going to start this in physical form because I think that the action adventure fiction works better for me in audio. Um, yeah. I won't, I won't go into another tangent on why some work, books work in audio. They're birds. <laughs> why some work, books work in audio and some don't for me. But anyway, I mean, you've had enough tangents. So that's my plan is to read these three books. I don't, I don't think that I will read them all three in their entirety this weekend. I really want to finish this one. And I would like to finish the Katie Lumsden book, um, just because I have the physical book for three days. And, um, but if I don't, I still have it on audio. So stay tuned, stay tuned. So yeah, now just to add more chaos, more chaos. I, um, also want to get my planners up to date. I, um, was back in, there's another bird. I was back into journaling, um, for, what month are we in? This is April. So I think I think in March I started journaling again pretty consistently. I was happy. And then I got the swine flu. I mean, I don't know for sure that it was the swine flu because I didn't go to the doctor, but it was going around. A few kids had it, but, or they said they had it, you know. Maybe it's just hearsay, but I was sick, man. Anyway, um, this is like, this is my work planner. And you can see the absolute chaos of my life since chemistry started. Like, yeah. So, I need to get to work now and quit boring you with my like, I don't even know what I've been talking about. So, let's do this thing. I'm going to go ahead and post this because it's like 20 minutes long already. <laughs> So this is just an intro. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back soon. <laughs>